Welcome to this video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. You may remember in a recent video that I recorded in Murano in Venice that I was talking about with the launch of the Z8 um, camera that I was thinking about the cameras that I have in my bag. Well, I followed up on that and I've taken delivery of a Z8. Um, when I put my deposit down, the lead time was one to two weeks, which I thought was quite good. However, the day after I put my deposit down, Nikon announced the service advisory. That elongated the lead time by about a week, um, but that wasn't too bad. I got a camera that didn't need to go back to Nikon, so well done for sorting that out, Nikon. I also got the camera before a planned trip to New York, which was a great opportunity to test out the Z8. And this video is about my personal initial impressions, the things I like about the camera, the concerns I have with the camera, and where am I with the Z8. Now this isn't a full review, a spec review, there's plenty of great reviews out there um, on the internet already. This is my personal impression, so let's start with the things I like about the Z8. The biggest thing that I found for me personally is the autofocus. The speed to focus, the tracking of the focus, and the performance in low light. Now, a lot of the subjects that I shoot are quite spontaneous. I see a shot, I try and get that shot. So I have to be quite quick. The, the subjects, the scenes are quite complex. There are multiple subjects quite often, they're moving around. So autofocus has to be able to get the right um, subject, focus on it quite quickly, and track it to allow me to get the shot. Equally, as you know, I'm a bit of a hybrid shooter. I do stills photography, but I also use the cameras for video, for videos like this. So talking heads interspersed with other B-roll. And you guys know if focus isn't right. You know if the camera isn't tracking my eye. And therefore, eye tracking is really critical. I've so far been pretty impressed with the Z8. It's lived up to my requirements um, on my trip to New York and some of these videos that I've been capturing. So autofocus has been a real step forward. I've also got five things that I call my little big things. They're small things that individually, but when you combine them together, they do make a notch up in capability. So let's run through them quickly. Any of you that have a Z6 or Z7 or a Z5 will know that every time you change the lens, it attracts dust. It's a dust magnet, that sensor. There's no protection on it. And you have to get confident at cleaning the sensor. I've had to clean the sensors on my Z6 and Z7 more times than I ever did with any of my previous cameras. So the Z8 coming with a sensor protector is a little thing but it makes a big difference. So far, I haven't had to clean the sensor on the Z8. Okay, it's only been a few weeks, but in that time with my Z6 or Z7, I would have had to have cleaned the sensor once, possibly twice or three times. The second thing is something that I had on my D850. I say that, you know, I said that I, I shoot in low light quite often. And whilst one of the reasons I stuck with Nikon gear through time is that I know where the buttons are, I can quickly change settings, I have that programmed into me, that person camera interface is really important. Sometimes in low light, you need to be able to see the buttons or see the um, top panel. And on the D850, it had backlit buttons. That was taken away on the D6 and D7, 80, 90% of the time it wasn't a problem. There were a few occasions where I just missed those backlit buttons. So to have them back on the Z8 is really great. Um, number three is a more general um, little big thing. On my Z6 and Z7, sometimes I've got cramp when I've been holding it for a long period of time. And that's because the reduction in size, whilst it was a positive, actually meant my hands, that, and I haven't got big hands, on the grip, actually the ends of my fingers hit the um, body of the camera, creating a little bit of muscle cramp at times. Equally, my little finger fell off the bottom of the grip at times. The Z8, because it's slightly bigger, both in depth 
the, round the, the circumference around the grip is slightly bigger and the height of the camera is slightly bigger. I don't have that problem with the Z8. I'm back to where I had my D850, which was probably one of the most comfortable cameras I had to use. So the ergonomics of the Z8 are good for me personally. Number four is a really small thing. On my Z6 and Z7, I love the way on single autofocus, when the camera locked on, the focus point went green. Now, for some reason, in continuous autofocus, AFC, that didn't happen on the Z6 and Z7, and you couldn't change it. On the Z8, there's a really simple setting that allows you to have the focus point go green when there is focus capture in AFC. So well done Nikon for making that tweak. Maybe you'll go back and introduce it back through the Z6 and Z7 and the Z6 uh, 2 and the Z7 2 as well. The fifth and final one is not something I've measured. It's a perception that I have in that, as I said, a lot of the shots I take are quite spontaneous. And then bringing, therefore bringing the camera back from standby or from um, when it's been turned off is really important. That speed to on seems faster in the Z8 than the Z6 and Z7. I'll try and measure it at some point, but so far it's just a perception. So as I said, those five little big things are quite small things individually, but overall it means the Z8 is a notch up from the Z6 or Z7 for me. Now, as we know, no camera is ever going to be a perfect fit for every photographer. And I have a number of concerns with the Z8 based on my use case. Are any of them deal breakers? Well, I'll come back to that perhaps at the end. Some of them are sizable. Some of them are less important. I've got five of them. The first two I'm going to bundle together, and that's size and weight. In terms of weight, the Z8 is a little bit heavier than the Z6 and Z7. To me, that is noticeable, particularly when I pair it with my 24-70 f2.8 lens, which is a slightly heavier lens. Um, and it's noticeable compared to the Z6, Z7 with that lens. Equally, the size of the camera is bigger. Um, there are some benefits, as I said, in my likes. However, when I put an L bracket on the camera, which I do quite often because it just makes flipping from um, landscape to portrait in, on a tripod much easier, equally it gives a bit of protection to the base of the camera when I put it down. It just means that the camera is noticeably bigger than the Z6 and Z7. That's a, a positive when you're actually using the camera. However, what I'm finding is that some of the bags I would have naturally used for my Z6 and Z7, it's a bit of a squeeze to get the Z8 in there. Um, equally, it's a bit of a challenge when you're putting it in and taking it out. It can catch on some of those bags. So with my New York trip, I went for a stripped back approach. I would naturally normally have taken my Z7 and the 2470 f2.8. This time, I challenged myself, because I knew what kind of shooting I was going to be doing, to go back to the Z8 with my 24-70 f4, a great lens, really sharp. You just trade off a little bit of aperture there. And it did fit in the bag when I was taking my 14-30 to f4 with me as well. So you just have to perhaps rethink a little bit, but it's still a concern on size and weight for me. If size and weight are numbers one and two, number three is about cards. I've been lucky. I've been using the same cards and battery with my last few cameras. Um, with the Z6 and Z7, I've been using XQD cards because it only had a single card slot. With the Z8, there's the benefit you've got dual card slots. However, that's a, um, an XQD CF Express size card and an SD card. It's a while since I've used SD cards in a camera and therefore some of my cards, the write speeds were quite slow. Equally, the XQD cards I had, the write speeds were slower than I perhaps needed to really leverage the full performance envelope of the Z8, particularly when it comes to high speed video and perhaps 8K video. 
And therefore, upgrading to CF Express um, Type B cards was something I felt I needed if I was going to make sure I wasn't caught short when I was using the camera um, and wanting to use some of that performance. Equally, not all CF Express cards are equal. The write speed is different between different brands and different levels of CF Express. And the thermal properties when you're perhaps recording some of those higher end video, um, video formats, it, you know, the, the thermal performance of the cards varies between manufacturers. So I've actually bitten the bullet and invested in some new cards, which does add to the cost of the system but allows you to unlock that full performance level. Number four is again quite similar. One of the benefits of the Z8 is 8K video. Not because I'm gonna output in 8K, but it allows me to perhaps crop in a little bit more, take, some, you know, take one video and then use it for different angles and different approaches. So I did try using 8K video, which the camera performed beautifully with. The challenge I had was with the rendering and the um, editing of those videos. My computer is more than capable of doing 4K smoothly and works brilliantly. However, 8K, it really did stutter and begin to melt down. Um, and therefore, I'm going to have to play around with the, um, the, the choice of 8K codecs, perhaps, to ensure that I can actually process that video. The alternative is a bit like the cards, investing in um, an upgraded graphics card or an upgraded computer if I really want to get into 8K video um, manipulation. So do think about the overall system, that end-to-end -end life cycle when you're upgrading one component such as the Z8 um, camera if you want to unlock its full capability. Number five is another performance one. With the upgrade of the Z8 from a new sensor with the dropping of a mechanical shutter moving to a, a fully electric sh electronic shutter, that gives us some benefits in terms of frames per second for burst rate capture. But for me, what's the point of a fast frames per second if the autofocus isn't able to keep up? Now I've tried the, um, the higher frames per second just to trial them, though I haven't been using them in anger yet, but so far the performance of the camera seems to be really balanced. So well done Nikon at creating something that is a technology step forward, but has pushed the envelope in both the burst rate and the autofocus capability. And it's really that XP7 processor that's perhaps the core of all of that. So are these just concerns or are any of them going to become deal breakers? I'll only find out when I really get into using the camera in real world use scenarios. So it'll be interesting to see going forward. So how does the Z8 stack up for me personally? Well, you've got to go back to why did I upgrade? For me, it wasn't about image quality. I had a 45 megapixel sensor in my Z7. Equally, I didn't want the new technology of a new sensor type and the dropping of the mechanical shutter to degrade that image quality. Now, Matt Irwin's done a great comparison video between the Z7 and the Z8, and I think I'm with him on what I'm experiencing. Um, it's in line with what he has in his video, so go and check that video out. For me, it was a number of other performance things that um, I was interested in when stepping forward a generation of camera. For photography, it was about the autofocus, as I've described in the things I like. Equally, some of those little big things were important to me. In terms of video capture, the in-camera performance um, of pushing out that range of codecs that you can use in camera was quite useful. So for example, I've started using the H.265 4K capability of the camera to capture these videos. Underpinning all of that is the XP7 processor, which is undoubtedly a very capable processor. 
I used my Z6 recently for a cycle race, a road race. So the bikes were passing quite fast, quite close. At times it was moving towards the evening, so there was low light. Now I took about 1500 shots um, during that event and I was pleasantly surprised by the capture rate of the focus um, in that situation. However, it, you could see at times it was getting towards the edge of the capability envelope for that Z6 um, in the low light, fast, high burst rate um, type environment. The Z8 actually widens that envelope for me. It is a notch or two better than that. Now, the other consideration when you're trading um, up or upgrading is the economics. One thing I found is that Nikon gear holds its value reasonably well. And that was the case this time. I got a fair price for my Z7 and it just made the economic case um, quite good at this point in time. What I found is that Nikon Pro um, cameras don't tend to come down in price that much over time. Equally, um, cameras like the Z6, Z7, there is a fluctuation in the market, but they do tend to hold their price. Um, it comes down to supply and demand. And therefore the economics were right for me at this point in time. As I said, the Z8 is not a massive performance step up for me, but on balance, it works well as an overall package. And when I combine it with my Z6, which I'm keeping, I think it's gonna be a really good combo with the Z8 performance envelope, but equally if I want a slightly smaller camera, lighter weight camera, the Z6 is more than capable in many situations that I find myself in. So the decision to change cameras or upgrade is a personal one and really depends on your use case, your scenario, your situation. Perhaps you're considering upgrading to a Z8. I hope my, my decision making process, my thoughts here have helped you with your decision. Maybe you've already upgraded to a Z8 and it'd be interesting to hear in the comments below what have been the little big things for you? What have been the big um, functionality upgrades that you've found. So do drop the, your thoughts in the comments below. As always, if you've liked this video, do hit like, do hit subscribe, and it'd be great to see you on a future video.